Milan with its famous cathedral, one of the Italian cities which has suffered greatly from the war, is the leaf center for tourists which take GIs on an eight-day vacation to Switzerland. Selection for these special Matusa tours is based on merit. A Douglas B-74 brings the men from the garrisons of southern Italy to the airport of Milan. Good news, which will allow them to enjoy their vacation to the full, is awaiting this particular group of GIs on their arrival at the Milan airport. It now looks as if they would soon be home. Peace at last. A friendly sign among the ruins points the way to Switzerland. GIs arrive from every direction. Even German buses, driven now by prisoners of war, conduct them to their meeting place. The Swiss Express from Pisa reaches leave headquarters after a 24-hour journey. These GIs choose which of the carefully planned routes they wish to follow. Patrick Mowers of Wyandat, Michigan receives his control papers, while Jerry Samplot of Chicago gets the regular 175 francs pocket money. That won't last you long, Jerry. There is someone who has heard about the snow and ice in the Swiss Alps. But still, the trip seems to be beginning very comfortably. Hey, he wants to go to Switzerland, too. The town band of Chiasso celebrates the arrival of the American guests. Welcome to Switzerland, boys. Major Cook, the American liaison officer. We hope you will have a good vacation here. And now on to Lugano with its beautiful lake and Monte San Salvatore. While the GIs from the Mediterranean theater are enjoying the warmth and sun of the Ticino, those from the European theater visit the Cathedral of Baal, a city rich in the humanistic traditions as personified by Erasmus and Jacob Burckhardt. GIs travel from Lugano over the electrified Gotthard Railroad into the heart of Switzerland. A colonel of the 5th Army rides in the engineer's cabin. The road spirals three times within the mountain. The Gotthard Tunnel, built in 1882, runs for 15 kilometers through the Alps at an altitude of 1,100 meters. High up above the tunnel, on the Devil's Bridge, an Itusa group of GIs has assembled. After the fall of France, Switzerland's military strategy was once more based on the natural fortress of the Alps. Since Napoleon's days, when the Russian General Suvorov crossed these mountains, no foreign army has passed through Switzerland. While the Gotthard is the key of Switzerland's military defense, Bern is the capital of the country. Since its founding in 1191, Bern has used the bear on its coat of arms. The bears of Bern are famous. Although Bernese bears eat only carrots, apparently in the old days the citizens of Bern had other habits. One of the many fountains of Bern, the Kindle Fresser, a terrible warning for disobedient children. The GIs seem to have their own preference. For nearly 600 years, Bern was one of the leading city republics of Europe. 
This piece of sculpture over the entrance to the burned cathedral portrays the Last Judgment. The aspect of Bern has not changed for centuries. The federal building which houses the Swiss government can be seen in the distance. The city is rich in old buildings, arcades and towers. The Zeitglockenturm records the hours. The ancient clock reminds the GIs they are in the home of the watch. From this modern workshop in Geneva, Swiss watches find their way into every part of the world. The first watches were made in Geneva in 1587 and the Swiss watch industry employs today more than 60,000 highly specialized workers. A watch as souvenir, that is their greatest wish. But there are not only pretty watches in Switzerland. Look at that baby. Oh boy. She sure runs like a Swiss watch. Come on, let's go. The army is not enough for this operation. Better take the Navy too. Since the days when Mark Twain visited and wrote about Luzerne, the city has been a favorite resort for Americans. During the war, it was forbidden to display any foreign flag, but now the Stars and Stripes floats over the lake where William Tell lived. innate discipline and natural behavior of the GIs has made an excellent impression. Not that way, this way. From Luzerne, the GIs travel over the Brunig Pass in the most modern railway carriages. After war-ravaged countries, it is good to see peaceful villages and farms. winds in and out between the Swiss lakes. At St. Moritz, the famous resort in the Engadine, horse races are held on the ice of this lake in the winter. But now GIs decide to try their hand at a little trout fishing. And they even catch a few. Zurich, with a population of 350,000, is the largest city in Switzerland and an important banking and commercial center. Here is a group of Swiss peasants from Aargau in their costumes who also happen to be visiting Zurich. Zwingli, the Swiss reformer, preached in Zurich's Grossminster in the 16th century. And today, a statue of Charlemagne looks out over the city which was once his. 
Here on this store are portrayed many of the famous episodes in the history of the city. During one of the religious wars, the opposing armies came together to eat bread and milk. Instead of fighting, they settled their differences over their meal and went quietly home. The cathedral of the monastery of St. Gaul, founded more than a thousand years ago by the Irish monk Gallus, is one of the centers of the Catholic tradition. 41% of the Swiss population is Catholic. Here we are in the canton of Appenzell. The Appenzellers are the wittiest and most musical Swiss. What's going on? In the summer, the farmers pasture their livestock in the mountains and their return in the autumn is always a festival. And now up to the high Alps, the land of the eternal snow. The Aletsch Glacier with its 22 kilometers and the peaks of the Bernese Alps and the valley aroused the interest of the GIs. The hotel and station on the Jungfrau Joch, located at over 10,000 feet, is the highest in Europe. A soldier of the Swiss mountain troops explains to an American officer the route up to the Jungfrau. This GI seems to know his business. Summer and winter, these polar dogs go about their task. On the peak on the left, one of the Alpine weather observatories, known as the Sphinx. Here the sun is even warmer than the summer sun of Italy, but the snow underfoot makes all the difference. They'd like to try it too. It looks so easy. The Alpine Meteorological Station is the highest experimental station in Europe. Science and natural forces are combined in Switzerland. The country has no coal. Inexhaustible mountain streams are its most valuable raw material. Experiments in the use of electricity are a speciality of Swiss scientific work. The practical quality of isolators is tested in high-voltage laboratories. This indicator shows the voltage rising, one and a half million volts. Even the steepest and most difficult stretches of the Swiss railroads are electrified. From Zermatt, the Gorner Graat Railroad runs past the glaciers of the valley to the icy heights of the highest mountains of Switzerland. A storm gathers over the Matterhorn.
Switzerland is full of contrasts. Monte Rosa, 14,000 feet, is the highest peak in the country. The Chateau of Chillon, where Bonivar, immortalized by Lord Byron, was in prison. Geneva, the largest French-speaking city in Switzerland, combines natural beauty and an ancient culture. It was from Geneva, the home of Calvin, that the Puritan tradition was carried to England and the United States. Dufour, one of Switzerland's four generals, participated in the founding of the Red Cross, which since his day has rendered such services to humanity. GIs visit the League of Nations building, symbol of the dream of a great American president. This huge globe is a watch showing the time in all corners of the world. Other international organizations, such as the International Labor Office, have their headquarters in Geneva. Lack of gasoline during the war has made bicycling a favorite Swiss sport. GIs like it too. But best of all is alpine gliding. A group of American air forces visit an airfield in the Engadine. One of the boys decides to try it himself. When the war ended, approximately 150 American planes which had been unable to reach their home bases after raids over enemy territory, were interned on Swiss airfields. During the war, over 1,700 members of the American Air Force, crews of these planes, as well as men who had been shot down over enemy territory and had made their way to the Swiss frontiers, were interned in Switzerland. Today, however, the war is over. Once again, people can travel normally and the Swiss are glad to be able to receive within their peaceful borders hundreds of thousands of GIs, men who fought for the ideals shared by the two countries, the smallest and the largest democracy of the world, Switzerland and the United States of America. <laughs>